If you're like me and you like to collect things, then Notion might be just the tool you've been looking for. And maybe that's why you started using it. When I first discovered Notion, over two years ago, it was this aha moment of, oh my gosh, I have been such a collector for the last couple of years and I cannot believe I found a tool that is going to organize my entire personal knowledge library. I didn't even know that existed or what that was. In today's video, we're gonna be walking through how I collect and take in knowledge that I've gotten from whether that's books or movies or even things like screenshots of things that I've taken and how I organize them using both Notion as well as my favorite other app, Google Photos. Hey everyone, my name is Jenna Redfield. I have this YouTube channel where I talk about Notion, ADHD, marketing, and productivity. And today I'm gonna be walking through how to set up a knowledge base for yourself within Notion as well as Google Photos. Collecting information is something that has always been a part of my life and it's something that I've absolutely been doing since childhood. And so I don't know if you're like me, but if you like to collect information, you need a place to store it. When it comes to Notion, I collect a lot of different things from movies that I've watched to games that I've played to things that I have in my house. I've literally tried to document almost everything I own and that took a long time. Some of these things have taken a really long time and some of them I'm like, was that worth documenting, uh, but at the same time, there's a few that have really stood out to me in terms of the boards and databases that I've created that have been super helpful, including one of my most favorites is my Frameworks dashboard, which actually walks through all the things I've learned over the last couple of years. So I wanted to share with you guys what I document, how I kind of set that up, how I sort of structure it within Notion, because I've definitely learned from a few different people on YouTube as well as created my own systems and also figuring out exactly what I should actually document. And then also walking through how I do everything in Google Photos because I store a lot of content in there as well, probably even more than Notion. Um, a lot of it is just taking for example, TikToks I've downloaded or screenshots and kind of how I organize them. Um, if you haven't watched my pillar video, I would recommend watching that first. It kind of explains my entire system. I also did a full video on Google Photos, so if you don't know how to use that, as well as all of my other Notion content. So let's just get into it so that you guys can kind of see my systems. This is episode three of my five-part Notion Mastery series, which has been coming out every single week. You can check out all of the episodes below, as well as see what's coming up soon in our other series. Uh, also make sure to check out Notion Foundations All Access, which if you're new to Notion, it's a really, really great uh, course that teaches you how to use it. Uh, it also has all of my templates and monthly trainings as well as office hours for questions. So it is honestly the best deal out there. So make sure to check it out below. Okay, I'm super excited to walk through some of my personal knowledge databases within Notion. Now, if you know me, you know that I like my pillar system and so everything is organized by that. So I guess I'm gonna get started with showing you guys my tagging system because that is kind of how I organize everything. I have done a couple of videos on this before, so a lot of this isn't new information, but I just wanna show you if you haven't seen it or if this is obviously an updated version. So. If you go into my knowledge uh, vault, I have everything organized into the 13 pillars and then now they have drop downs, which has been so helpful once those came out. I've also been super happy that there is now multiple ways to update icons so you can have the same icon for everything. So um, one of the things that I do within my tag and knowledge vault is this is kind of where I host everything on the main level. So everything that I have is stored here originally in the tag and knowledge vault area. And then if you scroll down, what you'll see is if it has a asterisk, that means that there's another database within it. Sometimes there's nothing in it. Maybe it's just to be tagged for other relations, uh, but sometimes this is actually where I house some of the databases inside. So I wanted to walk through some of my different databases. I have a list um, and I'll kind of walk through. I have done this again before, but a lot of you guys wanna see it and see what I organize and how I create, again, a way to store information. The first thing I wanna walk through actually is one of my most favorite databases, and this is kind of what I've been working on a lot the last couple of months, and that is my Frameworks database. Now, again, I'm showing this video to show you guys what I store in my personal knowledge database of things that I like to save. I am one of those people that will screenshot and save things, photograph things, and I like to remember them. So one of the things I made, and this has been an ongoing, very, very, very long-term uh, board, and that is my frameworks and abbreviations. And 
You can see here I have drop down for each one. These are all things I've learned from books, from Twitter, from podcasts I listen to. You can see here that I have it organized by the parent so you can open it up. I also have it tagged to specific databases. So for specific ones, they might link to a specific tag within the Knowledge Vault. Also, some of them relate to different books as well as people and PDFs. So if there's like a specific PDF that goes along with a specific framework, I link that over via a relation. You can see that I've, you know, created a lot of things. I recently got into razors, which are basically like small quotes. And I spent like two hours the other day just like Googling all the razors I could find and then put them in here, <laughs> which again, it's my time, like this is what I do in my free time. So you can see here that a lot of them have images within them. So what I do is I create, I go, uh, I click the forward slash and then upload an image. I actually put it for this board within just the uh, page area. So like, for example, I didn't put it as the cover just for this one. I just put it in here because sometimes there's text as well that I wanna place in there. But for me, having that where I'm able to share visually all of the different categories has been very helpful as well. So you can see as you scroll through, this one, obviously I've gotten rid of this so I can delete that one. This is not filtered at all, but you can see that I have a ton of different things that I have organized and I always am adding new ones that I find. So for me, it's helpful to see if I wanted to, I could see all of them listed this way and then I could sort them by the tag. So if I wanted to find something about branding, I could see, okay, well, what is SMILE? What is that an acronym for? Oh, it's, it's about naming something. It's something I read in a book. And then I can link over, it's from the book, Hello, My Name is Awesome. So you can see that I have started creating just an overall area that, that helps me remind me of things that I've read because I don't remember half the things I read. I read, I read a lot of books and for me, remembering what I read is very hard. Um, maybe I'll move that into our next category, which is books. So um, you'll see I have books here on the homepage. I have organized my books in a couple of different ways. Right now, this is my, my main one, which is current, done, things that I'm reading. So these are my current books right now. I just read a book and I don't think I even had time to add it to this list. And that was called The Three Alarms. So I'm gonna add that here. I just finished it. So then what I could do is if I wanted to, I could create a new book description. Um, this is actually, all this is part of my template by the way. And I could write out, I, what I do is I write out the table of contents and then I can put any notes in. Right now it is done. So I'm gonna switch it to that. But eventually what I could do is I could add an image of the book as well as add any quotes. What I usually do when I read, and I have a whole video about reading books and what I do is I read most of my books on the Kindle. And then what I do is I highlight things and then turn them into quotes and then put them inside of Google Photos. That is how I organize my book notes, but I also create book notes within Notion to save information. So you can see that these are all the books that I have read. So like, for example, this was The Slight Edge that I just finished. You can see I have organized it into all of the different um, table of contents. So I can go through there. If I wanted to add notes, I can. So that's how I organize my books. I have, again, a whole video on that. It's kind of complicated because I read so much. I read a lot of stuff digitally. I don't like listening to audiobooks because I can't really take notes or see it. So for me, reading, I like to read them on my iPad because then again, I can highlight and then send them over to Notion. So I've got my frameworks, I've got my books, some other things that I like to document, things like TV shows. I don't record much beyond what I'm actually watching. So I kind of try to track, you know, shows like these are the shows I want to watch. These are what I'm currently watching. I'm not caught up on yet. So like this one I finished. So I am caught up. I can just move that over. You can see shows I haven't started yet and then shows that I'm done with. So that's a way for me to kind of track what I'm currently watching. Same with movies. So I, again, I don't look at these ones a lot because I haven't been watching as much TV shows and movies lately, but if, if someone's like, hey, like what's a movie for kids? I could literally just go in and be like, oh, here's all of my kids' movies that I've ever seen. You can see I, or again, <laughs> this is a lot. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie and say that like this hasn't taken me many, 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 many hours to make. 
I also have obviously linked it to the year that it was recorded, which again was just more for me. I always love movie trivia. So for me, having information about movies that I've seen is just something I like to store away for later. And then, you know, podcasts. This is also helpful if I'm like, oh, what podcast should I listen to? I'm going on a road trip. What should I listen to here? The current ones that I've been listening to lately, that sort of thing. YouTube, I don't use this one a ton, but it is like another place to store again things, just different accounts. I need to go through that. I haven't updated it in a while. So that's another thing. I also have my famous people database, which I think I've mentioned before. I don't use that one too much anymore, but this is kind of a list of different types of people that I can track. So if I'm reading a book by someone and I want to tag them, if there's a quote or something, I like to have them in my famous people <laughs> dashboard. I've, I've talked about this in my weird notion video, notion databases board. That is another thing that I like to keep track of. I have mentioned before that I ha track everything in my grocery list. So these are all the things that I have in my um, cupboards. So I always say if it's in stock, out of stock, that sort of thing. It's a great way to know what I need to get at the grocery store. I also have, let's see, what else do I have? In the contacts database, I also list all of my family, friend, collaborations, clients, and content. So content could be people that I'm interviewing. I have a new uh, series on my uh, local Instagram called Trails and Tales, so I can you know, track all the people, where they at, have they booked a slot with me. That's a great way to store all of this. I'm kind of walking through this really quickly because there is so much to it, but I kind of wanted to walk through specifically if you're interested in creating all of this for yourself, what, how to do it. Because a lot of the times I just show it and don't actually share how to do it. So that's what I'm gonna be walking through today. Um, I will say um, I have a template that does have a lot of this kind of set up already, including like the tags and knowledge base. So that might be helpful to use. Otherwise, obviously, Anything that I have created on Notion, you could re recreate if you wanted to. And that is how it is a great way to learn is to just see what somebody else has done and then kind of take it for yourself. But it will, it will take some time. So if you if you want to save yourself hours and hours like I have, I have that available. If you go to the tag and knowledge vault, you will see that what I have done is I've created again my 13 pillars. You can see it's also available in board view where I organized it. Some of these haven't even been added to the right ones. Again, I like to organize by color as well. So I have different people. I have all of these different, different things. And for me, like knowing what I want to store in Notion is the first step. What do I actually want to store? For example, um, I don't do anything money-wise. I don't do anything because it's just, that would take forever for me to update money because I would rather just use a system that's automated with my bank account. There's a few other things I don't use Notion for. I don't actually put a lot of images in Notion in terms of like a way to store my image files. I use Google Photos for all of that, but there are certain databases and certain dashboards that I do download photos and upload specifically for that dashboard. So again, finding out what you wanna use Notion for and creating your own system is really gonna be helpful. I tend to do a lot of different things that I find helpful. For example, the one I didn't mention, uh, articles. This is one that I actually use the Notion, the Notion Chrome extension for, and I can save articles. These are, for example, two different articles I've uploaded to this from Chrome, but I haven't actually upload or updated yet. So what I would do is I would open this up and be like, okay, so this is about business. So let's do business projects as the parent so now it's going to be listed under here you can see it here and then what i do is i change the icon so that it is uh looks like it's like a paper and then i try to do uh this color um actually you know what i should probably change this color i should change all these colors because that's the wrong color so i could go through and select all of them and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click icons and then I'm gonna change them to yellow because they're all business projects. I don't know why these aren't the right color. That's easy enough, right? Now I got all of them, all of these different articles about business in that color. So this one's 100 tips for a better life. So that would probably be under, I would say that's under mind expansion. Sometimes like I'm like, all right, mind expansion. And then the parent item is mind expansion. 
All right, so that's going to stay silver because that's the color of mind expansion. So you see how I can do this. So now if I go to mind expansion, you will see it is now here somewhere. If I keep scrolling down, I have a lot of articles in this one. Um, 100 tips for better life right there. Some of these don't have icons yet, so I, you know, sometimes I have to go through and update them um, just so they have the matching icons. There we go. That sort of thing. That just takes some time. It used to take so much longer because you couldn't do multiple at the same time. So one of the things I'll have to do is go through and update the colors of this. For a long time I had articles all be silver, but I'm like, I need to go alongside of my, my color palette that I've done. So that is one thing I need to update. But this is all things, again, I save from the internet. So if I find a really good article, I will automatically just save it using my, you know, my browser uh, Chrome extension to Notion. So that is one thing that I like to do. Another thing that I like to use Notion for is PDFs. Now I have a ton of PDFs from different courses and things I've downloaded. So I have actually created a ton of different, and I need to update these two. Well, so you see these have like the different colors already. So you can see that I have these organized. So for example, this is a uh, PDF from a book, from the book Tra Traffic Secrets. It's called The Dream 100. When I read the book, it tells you to go to a website. I go to that website, I fill out my email, they send me a PDF, and then now I'm able to have that PDF uploaded inside of Notion. So I can just go forward slash PDF and just literally select it, upload it, and now it's within there. So instead of having um, Google Drive or external hard drives, I just can store everything inside of Notion, which is super helpful for me. I don't have to like have them on a ton of different hard drives and it doesn't take up any of my drive space. So for me, PDFs is one thing that I have used for a lot of Notion stuff. Here's some examples of, from the book, Never Split the Difference. I've recently been reading that book. So I went and got that, you know, so now I can link it. I linked it back to the book. I'm probably going to put this under, I'm probably going to put this under mine expansion. So now you'll see that it goes under that parent item. I can also tag, I don't know if I have negotiation as a knowledge vault. So maybe, I wonder if I do. I don't think I do. No, um, uh, maybe just mine expansion for now. I will figure out what category this goes into, but you can see that I have a place to store all of my PDFs now. I've got uh, business projects, I've got, all these are about business. And so if I ever need to look for something, again, search is super helpful in Notion, I'm able to find things quickly. So I hope that this was, a, this is a lot. And I've done a couple of videos on this topic and I just kind of wanted to cover this again because I think having a central place for all of your knowledge all of the information that you want to store. I'm just giving you some ideas of what I store in Notion. And um, I want to also show you guys my Google Photos because that is a huge part as well of what I store. Okay, so this is an example of what one day in my life looks like when it comes to screenshots. I will save, for example, a TikTok. Oh, this is a, a, a pool bag that's cool. I want to save it in case I need it. All of these are screenshots of things from my Facebook group of people joining. I screenshot to make sure I grab their email. Um, these are examples of books I'm reading and that sort of thing. So every single week or every month, I try to go through each day and organize all of these screenshots into different folders. For example, we've got a couple here that are about cooking. So we've got some, I, I found this Buzzfeed article yesterday and I thought these were really helpful guides. So what I do is I just go album and then I search for the album. So I'm probably gonna call it food. So then I kind of go through food, 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 food prep and nutrition would probably be the right one. So then all of a sudden it's now added to the right folder. And you can see I have tons of different things that I have saved over time. I have uh, screenshots. I've got like some of these is not correct. Um, but like you can see I have TikTok videos that I save. I have Pinterest pins. Anything that has to do with food prep and nutrition, I put inside of this folder. You can see I scrolled down. I've got, again, like some interesting TikToks. I've got, all of these are Kindle quotes that I found. So if you see that here, then what I do is I search my Kindle. This is probably one of the ones that is the most insane. You can see I have 2000 items in here, but I'll just save that to my Kindle quotes. And you can see I have been saving quotes for years from books. Like I've gone back even before I even had a, like Kindle. Like I took pictures of pages. This goes all the way back to 2018. So like I've been doing this for a long time. And what's cool about Google Photos is that you can search terms and it will find things within Google Photos that have those words. 
So I'm trying to think of an example, but the other day I was looking up something about like pricing and then it came up with every single thing I'd ever screenshotted that had the word pricing in it. So for me, the search inside of this has been so helpful. And um, also I'm able to organize everything into the albums. Now I did a whole video on this, how I organize it. Again, I used the 13 pillars. I used the different colors um, and it did take me a few hours to make all the covers for these, um, but it's now super helpful. I know instantly like what, what things are. So for example, this is my Trader Joe's folder where I save everything from Trader Joe's. Now, every time I find a TikTok or a reel about Trader Joe's, I make, I put that in there. So if I'm ever at Trader Joe's, I can like scroll through that folder and find the things I'm looking for. This is another recent one. I recently got AI headshots. So I've been using those in some of my YouTube videos and stuff. So like I have that folder now, but you'll see it is blue because that is under content creation. So if you sort it by album, title you will see that oh this one needs to update the title so let's do content AI headshots let's refresh that so now you'll see that it's organized again first by pillar and color and then you'll see I have clients as you scroll down some of them I haven't added covers to yet but you can see I have everything organized this way and what I love about Google Photos is it also can organize it by the most recently added photo so you can see which ones I've actually been working on this week. And this is again how I organize my life because I screenshot and take so much content from the internet. So this is, let's see, uh, these are just some videos of some clients. I've got, okay, this is an example I used in a workshop that I was doing. So I put, I uploaded that. So yeah, I, I downloaded a bunch of stuff for a workshop. I've got my pictures of my dog so I could put those into an album. You know, whatever it is, like I'm just going through and downloading things all day long. Personal pictures I've got, you know, you literally can see I have a ton of stuff in my Google Photos. So I like to have these covers as well, just for, for privacy as well. You're not showing a bunch of random, and some of them are really weird. So um, I like to have lots of different things in here. So that is how I organize Google Photos. I have a whole other video on it, but I wanted to share it because a lot of people are like, how do you organize everything in Notion? And I'm like, I don't. I organize everything in Notion and Google Photos. I probably first put them in Google Photos before eventually putting them in Notion. So that is kind of my system of how I organize. I capture everything via screenshot on my phone or I download all of them. Anyways, I hope that this video is helpful. This is episode three of our five part series. I thought I would walk through this because I think it's helpful just to see again, kind of my thought process around how I organize and create a personal knowledge base for myself. I used to have one database for like everything and I've just split it up because it's just got too much. And I love the fact that now that we have folders within folders using um, subtasks and parent tasks and that sort of thing. So I hope that this was video is helpful. Uh, you can grab Notion Foundations All Access if you want more step-by-step -step tutorials as well as all of my templates. And I hope that this is helpful. Hope to see you guys next week and our next video.